This is a reading from the book called The Georgia Guidestones, America's Most Mysterious Monument, by Raymond Wiley and Katie Prime. The section of the book that I am reading from is called The Master of the Rose. In February of 1997, another mysterious stranger found his way into Elberton, Georgia, on a mission. But this man did not go to the Elberton Granite Finishing Company, nor to the Granite City Bank. Instead, he went straight into the offices of Carolyn Can. At that time, Can was the weekly editor of the local newspaper, the Elberton Star, and had followed the events surrounding the Georgia Guidestones mystery very closely. The man, who never revealed his identity, went to Can to persuade her to become the caretaker of a trust that he wanted to set up to beautify the property that the Guidestones stood upon. The man insisted that the monument should present itself as more of a Christian-oriented prayer site. She consented though she was confused as to why she had been singled out for this task. And the man donated a quantity of money sufficient to allow for the planting of rose bushes around the monument. He then submitted an article to her describing in detail his motivations for donating his money and promised to return soon to furnish the funds required to place benches at the site. Can never heard from him again, but a copy of the article that the mystery man wrote is still on file at the Elberton Public Library and it provides further insight into his own theories as to the true meaning behind the Georgia Guidestones. Describing itself as Article 1 of a series, the text is titled The Georgia Guidestones Guides the Stone, and it is here reproduced in its entirety. What is the mystery? Does it point the way to a new age or to an old age returning? What is the coming age of reason? Why did the benefactor call himself R.C. Christian? Why was he anonymous? What did he know about what, or who, was to come? Why is the use of granite rock important? Is there a technical reason the guidestones are constructed from granite? If so, what are the reasons? Why blue granite? Why did Master Jesus say he would build his church on the solid rock? Was it literal? Is that solid rock the solid granite of the Piedmont region and the granite outcropping? Where is the center point of the outcropping and does it extend outward like a pebble in a pond, or like radio waves? We are told that, in the beginning was the word. Could it be that at the turn of the century is a new beginning, and that the Georgia Guidestones are like a great key that turns the wheels of a clock to reset time? Could it be that there are clues in the word to point or guide the way to a new understanding that is contained within the word? Words and sound go together like guidestones, and guides the tone. Words and sound go together like stone mountain and tone mountains. Was it not sound that brought the wall of Jericho down? Will not sound and frequency shatter a kidney stone and heal disease? Cannot a beautiful soprano voice shatter glass with the purity of her tone, or tender the woundings of a suffering soul with the same tone? What is the relationship between the Georgia Guidestones, Stone Mountain, and the Piedmont Granite Shelf? Does it truly guide the tone and tone the mountain? Are they not all the solid rock? Is solid granite rock not also crystalline formation? Is not crystalline formation required in the transmission of sound waves and tone in the transmission of frequency and radio waves? Is it coincidence that the Georgia Guidestones can be accessed by traveling through Hart County? Did not Master Jesus give his heart to the earth? And is not heart and earth the same word when the first H becomes the last heart slash earth. What does it all mean? Could it be that the mystery of the Georgia Guidestones points to the greatest mystery of all? The Georgia Guidestones must become a sacred place. It is placed there for a very specific, technical, religious, and geometric and astronomical reason. A great garden of life, 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 life more abundant. Life must be planted there with evergreens, and roses, 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 roses red, roses white for the blue rose to come. If you build it, he will come. A beautification and care fund has been set up by an anonymous benefactor into which all Christians are invited to contribute in the name of Jesus the Christ, the Savior of mankind, the greatest master of time itself. The endowment fund will be solely dedicated to the care of the garden that is to be built for the great master. Many will begin to meet the miraculous at the stones that guide, and miracles will meet those who come to the garden to pray for guidance, like the great master once prayed at Gethsemane before the great resurrection and ascension. Miracles will come upon the wind. Miracles will come upon sun that rises. Miracles will come in the song of the bird. 
great healings will begin to occur there. Remember the solid rock. I will continue to unfold the mystery in articles presented to and through the Elberton Star. It is the star in the east, and I am simply a friend of the Master of the Rose. You may send your non-profit donations or endowments to Carolyn Can at the Elberton Star, who has been asked to manage the beautification project to bring the garden into being and make the stones that guide a sacred and far less mysterious place. That's the end of the article. To date, no other donors, Christian or otherwise, have come forward to add to the beautification fund, and a single bedraggled rose vine is all that remains of the roses that were planted for the blue rose to come. But that rose and the mimographed copy of the anonymous man's article remain as reminders of the clearly profound effect that Elberton's most mysterious monument had on at least one man.